The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Room for Freedom. Nothing's there yet. <laughs> and we're here with uh, Jeremy Heisen. And Heisen, 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 how do you say it? Damn it. I'm not doing uh, this again. <laughs> it's okay. Just, just call me whatever. I'm going with Heisenberg whatever. most of the, most of the Jeremy, time. Jeremy, whatever. Days. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. That actually might be my new one. I'm yeah. Go. So since the last time you've been on, um, oh, it escapes me. What was it? There was something that I can't. Fuck. What was it? Yeah. There was something happened. Um, I, I feel like we should be talking about it or something. I just don't probably. know. Um, yeah. I didn't hear that. Yeah. Hear what? I didn't hear it. Oh. Um, oh. Okay. Anyways, uh, so let's talk about what's been going on lately, because <laughs> I, um, because there's been a lot that's been happening, especially with Trump, and oh. I don't, I don't know if you like Trump news, but Trump is fun to talk about, and the alt right. Yeah. Because well, yeah, we, that's... yeah, because I don't think we've talked about it in a while. Um, so Richard Spencer, I wish I had the little sound <laughs> thing up, but yeah, Richard Spencer had like tweeted the other day and he's been kind of like leaning left, left on like, especially on economics, but he's been kind of like leaving pro socialist kind of stuff on Twitter here and there. But I think it was uh, like a week ago or something. He said like, you know, like maybe the whole Holom- disaster, the famine, the genocide, it's a better word for it, uh, didn't really happen as, as we thought it was. Maybe it was accidental. Maybe it wasn't man-made. And <laughs> <laughs> wow, fucking commie. But yeah, like I was, I was, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, he's a whole denier, but I'm the leftist because I want, uh, you know, because I I don't want closed borders yet. I'm still looking for a communist country with closed borders. By the way, it's, that that search is still on, and so, <laughs> so I, I I'm not too familiar with the Holomore disaster. Like I have some f- passing familiarity with it. Like I've had some people like comment on or tell me things like, "Oh, look at this socialist. He's a Holomore denier." And I've kind of like looked at the Wikipedia about it. I have it pulled up, and. I was like, oh, yeah, like, wow, this is this clearly did happen. And this is <laughs> this is terrible. And there's like lots of scholarly sources to it. I mean, even the introduction to the Wikipedia page says um, the denial of whole or this is the denial. I actually have the wrong. One. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I have it up, too. It doesn't look like that for me. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have my shit together today. I just I mean, I didn't didn't hear that. Hear what? Uh, nothing. Um, so the Holomore, it says the Holomore um, was a man-made famine in the Soviet Ukraine in 1932 and 1933 that killed an, an officially estimated six, 7 to 10 million dot, dot, dot. Some scholars believe the famine was uh, planned by Joseph Stalin to eliminate the Ukrainian independence movement using the Holomore, Hol, Hol, Holodomor. How, how do you say that? Holodomor. Holodomor. Hello, Dubmore. Hello, Hello, Dubmore. Right? Hello, Dubmore. We're going to get comments. I, you, you don't even know how to pronounce it, but you're saying it's real. <laughs> <laughs> In yes, reference- if you can't pronounce it correctly, it must be fake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, at the same time, like a lot of them will tell me, like, race is more than just uh, melatonin in your skin. You mean melanin. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> um. Using the hol- Holodomor uh, in reference to the famine emphasizes its man-made aspects, arguing that actions such as rejection of outside aid, confiscation, and all of house blah blah. So it seems as though like he was he was upset about the Ukrainian kind of independence, trying to fight back against the um, the inclusion of them into the USSR, and they just wiped out was it seven to ten million people, but but it never happened. You just believe in the goy- wrong, wrong, wrong uh, Holocaust denial. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll never happen. You, you, yeah, well, come on, man. You know, you know, you know, history is always written by the victors, so that's all made up <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> but the USSR was the victor. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Hold on here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that, that, that's about as much sense as these people make if you actually press them on anything, you know, 
they can come out and make these statements and, and, and deny things all they want. But when you actually press them like with the, you know, evidence that's out there, that's what they sound like trying to do the mental gymnastics <laughs> it takes to uh, hold, hold firm on their position. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've gotten into the whole, what was it? Um, you just believe everything the mainstream media tells you about any single like conspiracy that's out there. Like, oh, you believe the Earth is flat? You just believe everything NASA tells you. It's like, well, NASA does tell me they're the only ones that can explore space, and that's obviously not true. <laughs> so uh, clearly, I do have some skepticism with them. And if they were constantly saying things I knew to be false, I'd be like, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. But they're not. <laughs> it seems that like all the evidence is there is that the Earth is round. I'm sorry. Like, what was it? Epicurious? What? The, not Epicurious. I never remember this guy's name. But these these you know these people back in like 300 BC have been like showing evidence. Like, okay, maybe the Earth isn't flat after all. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there there's there's simple tests you can do yourself to try to <laughs> to try to yeah. do the you know to try to prove these things. But people, I I don't know. Man. Well, that that's that is one of my favorite ones, though. When that you know when they yell about NASA because it's you know <laughs> you believe every it's like okay. Well, first of all, you're supposed to be a truth seeker, right? Right. Okay. Um, a truth seeker would probably want to use this 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 little thing. I don't know if you've heard about. It. It's called logic, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Now let me tell. You, let me ask you this. Just because something that somebody says is just because something is bad, does that necessarily mean everything they do is bad? Well, no. Yeah. Okay, so NASA. No, NASA's always lying. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and start again. Let's try this um, again. <laughs> like what? That's what that is a fallacy. What is that? That's uh, oh, it's gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm Guilt gonna by association. Poison. Yeah. Well. Uh, um, genetic. Genetic fall is genetic that one fallacy. of the names for genetic. Genetic fallacy. Yeah. Just because something. Just because uh, a source is bad, you think everything from it's bad, or or vice versa. You know, whatever. But yeah. Yeah. That's that's so. I, I laugh whenever I see those things. It's just like okay, folks. <laughs> We'll we'll keep moving on then. Thank yeah. you, thank you for your time. It's, it's been great. <laughs> a lot of these alt writers, you know, the ones that are getting prominence, like there's a couple like quote unquote libertarian ones. Um, Hoppe is actually not one, which is funny because they always like to cite him. I kind of feel bad for the guy because he's not even like he, he he retired from public speaking, and because he retired from public speaking, everybody's a, ascribing all these positions to him, and he's not in a position to like comment on them anymore because he's I know retired. it's like. He, it's like it's like he's it's like he's it's like he's dead and can't defend himself and everybody's just out there putting him he's he, he's another uh he's becoming a rorschach just like trump yep, right yep there you go <laughs> and so i i was um so i was uh god damn it I lost my train of thought here um anyways Hoppa. <laughs> yeah Hoppa. So yeah, like, um, but like a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are very like socialist, and it's understandable because a lot of the kind of far right things that you see, quote unquote far right things that you see in like Europe, they're not for free markets. Like everybody always talks about how like oh the right wants capitalism and property rights and all this other stuff. It's like no, that's a uniquely American thing for on the right. Like American oh, sure. conservatism and libertarianism. It's it's never it's never been on on the on the right anywhere else except for the United States. Like you go you go out outside of the country you go outside of the uh, continent rather because I don't know it's, it's sort of true in Canada. I guess it's sort of true in Mexico. I'm not too sure. Um, maybe we should ask Hugo about that. Uh, <laughs> but if, you know if you go out to like Europe, it's a completely different it's a completely different environment. The 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 right quote unquote is very socialist. They want big socialist programs. Um, a lot of the stuff that they want to quote unquote privatize is like how we talk, how, how leftists talk about privatization here, which is not that, oh, we should just let the free market handle it. Rather, we should give well-connected companies a complete monopoly over this thing and we'll just give them tax dollars to fund it. And that's the way it is. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that isn't that fascism? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and which <laughs> I didn't hear that. Um, hear I what? I don't. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um. So the so the right, yeah, the right is completely different, and I just kind of get tired of this this meme, and it's only really true in the new world. It's not true in the old world at all. The right is very socialist, but so is the left. Like, I don't think there really is like. 
Well, yeah, but that's because in in the political spectrum, the right and left, as most people see it, they think that's like the endpoints of the mm-hmm. spectrum. But re- realistically, like in the, in in the you know, you take that part of the political spectrum and you put it in the larger spectrum, and it's just a little tiny speck. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so somewhere towards the towards the uh, totalitarian end. And <laughs> yeah, that's why I always that's why I, like I don't like the term left and right because you can still be an authoritarian leftist, you can still be an authoritarian rightist. On paper, you can be <laughs> a libertarian socialist, and you can be a libertarian rightist, whatever that would, whatever. Um, I don't even think that would be quali- I don't even think libertarian really qualifies as right because there's a lot of things that they disagree with the right on. Um, yeah, but it, most people, I know, at least most people here that here 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 in the good old USSA that I know do still think that they fit in with that crowd anyway i don't know i don't yeah. understand why and and, and I, I i and mk lords had said that libertarianism spawned out of the left and i was kind of like really did it okay and i did some digging and it's, it's pretty much true like there's there's some yeah. nuance to it and no i i agree with her I actually i listened to that one and I, if, if she if i had listened to her say that a year ago i would have been screaming at my, <laughs> my phone yeah i would um, too but after you know doing a lot of soul searching myself over the past year or so and reassessing and reevaluating my own positions and my own stances um is when i heard her say it i was like yeah i didn't, you didn't even flinch i was just like yeah that, that's pretty much true yeah <laughs> sounds about right that's why i didn't yeah if you if i would have said that if you would have said that to me a while ago i would have said the same thing like no that's absolutely crazy but when she, when the time came she actually said it i was like that's plausible, <laughs> yep. like, especially seeing how the right is. Once you kind of step out of America and you see how the right is everywhere, you're like, at, at, you know, in other places outside of the new world, you're like, maybe there's some truth to that because, yeah, it's mm, the right is horrible <laughs> in Europe. The right. Yeah, the far right. They're pretty they're pretty much socialists in almost every respect. And uh, I'm, I just get tired of the whole. Well, that. Whoa. I don't. What are you saying? Whoa, to? I don't. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you cut. You cut out for a second, so I wasn't sure if you were still there or not. Oh, okay. I hear nothing. I I I, I hear you intermittently. So. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Anyways, um, <laughs> so uh, moving right along. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's well, one other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Go, go ahead. I know you're about to say something. Oh, I was, I was just going to say so. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry for interrupting. I know. Uh, I was going to say, I was going to say, you're, you know, you're saying the right, the right is the, the right, you know, worldwide is a lot more socialist. I mean, I don't know. In my opinion, the, the right here in, in, in the good old U.S. Is, is pretty darn socialist, too, and they don't realize it. <laughs> but oh, yeah. That's, that's just my opinion. <laughs> But compared to 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 Europe, they're they're miles oh, they're, apart. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, that that I would agree with, sure. Like, um, people like maybe like Ben Shapiro and um, Stephen Crowder may be a little bit more leaning towards libertarian. But yeah, like uh, people like Karl Rove and George Bush and Donald Trump. Uh, but he's he's more of a European style uh, rightist, uh, <laughs> whatever that word means. Um, but yeah, you know the establishment right. They're very much they they you know they rather they don't want to have like a public jail. They want to have a jail that's funded by taxpayers that's going to a private company, and that there's some some big conflicts of interest when you when you ter- ter- in terms of that. It's sure. like one of the few things that I'm like, eh, hey, you know what? Maybe quote unquote privatizing it isn't just a little bit better. <laughs> there's there's certain industries where you're just like, nah, those things shouldn't be those should either be left to the free market period or <laughs> could be completely government funded. Cause this this third option, there's an incentive problem that really makes things bad. And that's how you get like the drug war and why the drug war is so hard to fight against is because there's private interest, quote unquote private. Private interest, oh, yeah. yeah, who are like no, don't end the drug war because you still need to give us criminals to to put in, in our in our prisons. 
Yeah, what is, what is it? The prison guard union is actually one of the yeah. top donators to the cause of the drug fighting. You know, again, you know, trying to keep the drug war in place every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's and that's you know that that's that's not tinfoil hat stuff, folks. That's actually documented. You can yeah. go find that. <laughs> they they really are. They they lobby the heck out of out of out of Congress every time that anything about drugs comes up and that the, the, the even hints about deregulate uh, you know quote unquote de- deregulation. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, didn't hear that either. It's, yeah, the, what? yeah. There's um, there's a corporation that that or the couple of maybe a couple. I know there's just, there's one in particular that owns a lot of private prisons, quote unquote private prisons, and they lobby they lobby the um, Congress and the Senate to keep all these you know, to put keep putting new laws on the books and to increase mandatory minimum sentencing and all those sort of things in order to keep more prison prisoners in their prisons because as long as there's a prisoner they get tax tax money in order for every prisoner that they get yep yeah and that's 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 there's an incentive problem there where if it's the government there's an incentive the other way it's like well these people are costing us money maybe we shouldn't (laughs) maybe we shouldn't be doing that but as long as there's like shady backroom deals and smoke-filled rooms then you know it's it and there's money being given to politicians, and yeah, it's, it's a good incentive for them to spend taxpayer dollars <laughs> in order to keep pushing these policies. Uh, yeah. <sighs> but yep, that's that's the unfortunately the world that we live in. Yes. Um, and the right is is uh, socialist. Sorry, they are. <laughs> everybody's a, <laughs> everybody's a socialist, but me. A beginner's guide to libertarianism. Um, <laughs> Should that be the name of the show? Is that, <laughs> that sounds like a book Dave would write. Yeah. Um. I <laughs> um, thought I heard something. Oh, heard what? Um, so yeah. I, I guess we should talk about Jock. Well, at least I should probably talk about Jock Fresco because he just passed away. And that's kind of how I got started into libertarian. Well, not libertarian, but at least speaking about libertarianism on a public forum was criticizing the zeitgeist movement and the venus project and all that other stuff you're not too familiar with it right i mean no like i I told you earlier a lot of what i know about the venus project i learned i learned from watching you jim (laughs) (laughs) i was never involved let me just put no i know no learn you you know you you talking about it Mm -hmm. and criticizing it um you know i think I think the first time I actually became really aware of it was unfortunately after I became a Molly fan and he and I saw his one of his I guess debates with uh, what what was that was it Peter Joseph is that that crazy guy's name? Would well, you see the yeah. the one with Peter Joseph or did you want hear the one where someone like it was almost like a call-in show? No, no, I I I I I I either watched or listened to the debate with him and Peter Joseph. Okay, okay. So that that was my first real introduction to the whole idea of it, and then I went back and did a little research on my own, but not a super, you know, yeah. great deal into it. <laughs> and it's kind of funny listening to the to the left talk about, <laughs> I mean, like the people who, like the far the radical left, like anarcho communists, Marxists, all those people. If you listen to what they their criticisms of the Venus Project is, it's like, guys, just just come come on board with us because you're saying the exact same thing. You're just using new <laughs> words to talk about it with, like everything that you said. Like when they talk about like strategic access, like how we need to have like these these um these centers like libraries where people can you know where people contribute to stuff to to what they make and and everybody can take what they need to survive and and you know even for luxury items as well and they were like dude that's just the commons you just technicalize the terminology for the commons is all you did <laughs> <laughs> like everything that you talk about it's just reworded stuff that we've been saying for forever and so i think that criticism is like completely fair that you know it, it's basically marxism with robot yeah, it is Marxism with yeah. robots. Well, like I said, that, that's as far as I got into it. And I, I, you know, communism with robots. That sounds about right. Okay, uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, so that, that was been my criticism. Like, please tell me exactly how you differ from the Venus, uh, from the, the Zeitgeist, or excuse me. Tell me exactly how the Venus Project or the Zeitgeist movement differs from Marx. Because originally... So how this all started? Because I don't know if you ever watched the original Zeitgeist film. There was like three parts. It was one part was about yeah, Christianity. The other part I was watched, about the Federal Reserve I watched, and 9-11. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, I watched most of all of them at different points, okay. uh, but it's been a, it's been a while since I like I barely remember any of it. But I, I definitely watched you know a decent portion of them. <laughs> I don't think I really listened to half of it, but I watched it. Yeah. And so I guess what happened was he made the first movie, and then people were talking to him like, "How do we solve all the problems that you talk about in this movie?" And at the time, Peter Joseph was like a huge, you know, Paul bot, like a Ron Paul. <laughs> What do they call him? Paul Tard. He was a huge Paul Tard. <laughs> and, you know, that's why a lot, he talked a lot about, like, um, you know, not paying your taxes and, you know, the IRS and they're trying to chip us all and 9 11 was an inside job. And it was, you know, that, you know, a lot of that stuff is really common in the whole, you know, Ron Paul forums and stuff. And so he, he was just going to, like, produce something and be like, oh, libertarianism, gold standard, and, you know, like, small government, minarchy, Ron Paul, et cetera. And then. There was people who were trying to give him like information, like oh, you should check these people out, whatever. And one of the people that contacted him was these, you know, these nobodies from like Venus, Florida, like a, a swamp. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they sent him a book, and it was Jock Fresco and and his uh, girlfriend or life partner or whatever he wants to call it or whatever he did want to call it. He just passed away, and he um, he sent him the, the book was it the best that money can't buy or whatever? And he was completely convinced by it. And he went from, you know, talking like a normal human being into talking in like this weird jar. I don't know if you ever saw that Don Perdo. There's like a video about uh, Don Perdo where he says, like he talks for like an entire minute and a half using like these big words. You could barely understand what he's saying. But the only thing that he actually says is use shorter words. <laughs> it's like, that's all it means. <laughs> and uh, I wish I could pull that thing up. I have it somewhere. I yeah, I don't think it. I've co- uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, it's and funny. It, basically, that's how Peter Joseph talks. Like he'll 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 ramble on for like ten minutes about like you know blah blah blah. But what he's really just saying is, man, capitalism sucks. <laughs> like it makes people poor, <laughs> and you could just boil everything that Peter Joseph talks. But anyways, that's a side tangent. But anyways, they they gave him this book that he went out and talked to them, and he was like, okay, I'm going to do another one, and I'm going to talk about the Venus Project, and so. Out of nowhere, like the Venus Project went to a thing where like maybe 50 people in the entire planet heard of this to like a huge phenomenon. And like, you know, they're having like global events and people are coming out like they're filling up these, these you know, relatively large auditoriums, like not like Squ- Madison Square Garden, just out of nowhere. And it's just because of this this movie and they produce like another movie about it, <clears throat> you know, the moving forward one. And, you know, it just became great. Then, they, then of course, how Meg because. The guy who came up with this Jock Fresco is a megalomaniac. So is Peter Joseph. If you know how megalomaniacs interact, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they had a big falling out, and and then it just kind of faded up back into obscurity again. And that was pretty much the whole story about the Zeitgeist movement. And they're trying to stick around a little bit, and they're like, "Oh, we're still relevant. There's we're still growing." And it's like, but if you look on YouTube, there's nothing there. Like nobody's vlogging about it like it used to be. And it seems pretty much dead. And I guess he just passed away. The dude was like a hundred and no, he was. Uh, it was like I think he was like eighty nine when he first got involved with the group. So yeah, they've been oh really like ten years. Wow, it's really been that long. Jesus Christ. Yeah, two thousand seven. Yeah, I was gonna say it's definitely because I remember that as as I was first getting into all this stuff and people were, even people that had had had, had watched the first had you know had initially got on board with it and and rejected it quickly thereafter tried to convince me oh you, you at least got to watch the first one because the first one was still pretty good so <laughs> but i remember watching it and going yeah there's a lot of repetitive stuff here yeah. <laughs> not, not not saying much uh like you said taking taking a it's whole lot of words pretty. to say nothing yeah peter joseph knows how to make pretty shit on almost no budget he's good with that um I could go into all the problems with the with the with the the Christianity aspect of it, and I'm speaking from an atheist. Right, I, as an atheist, mm-hmm. there's a lot of problems with the whole like comparative um, religion thing, and if you even mention it, oh my goodness, you'll get like hate from Atari S fans and Zeitgeist fans, and <laughs> like it, they're they used to be well organized. Like, I I used to get like hate mail from Atari S's webmaster, <laughs> like it was insane. Like, are you crazy? But she passed away too recently. Cancer. Uh, wow, everybody's dying in that group. <laughs> dying along with it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't wish them ill will. You know, I don't want them to suffer. But at the same time, like they're wrong. <laughs> 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 they're so wrong about everything. Yeah. 
Did you know anybody yeah. that got sucked into that thing? Because I, I, that's how I got interested because like, I went to California. I met some of my friends I haven't met in like 10 years, and they were like, oh, you got to check out the Zeitgeist movement. And I was like, well, what is it? And they were explaining what it is, and I'm like, dude, that's just Marxism. <laughs> like, everything you just said was Marxism. And then I found critiques, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm right. It's Marxism. Yeah, like I said, I I, can't, I knew a couple of people that like dabbled in it, but then they they drifted away from it. I think I might have known one or two people that were still like at least a few years back that were still kind of like all about it. But then I just they disappeared from my radar altogether, so I have no idea what happened to them. Um, you know, hopefully hopefully they gave it gave it up again. But yeah, uh, it's there's I don't know. <laughs> like I said, that's just. Uh, it, that was one of those things. Was it was very easy for me to reject pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> I I do normally like to examine as many sides of a topic as I can before making a decision on whether I should keep it or 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 get rid of it. That one didn't take me very long. Yeah. I do remember that much that, that much about it. <laughs> there was actually um because I know that communists are like upset by it because it's like a utopian version and it makes them look silly um, of of what they believe. And there's kind of, there was kind of a version of that with, and it was it was it looked like it was directly inspired by the zeitgeist called Thrive. Did you ever see that film? It is no, I heard oh, oh, I heard so about it, but I did not I didn't see it. No. Okay, it's basically the anarcho capitalist version of that. <laughs> like, um, it starts out with like, oh, there's like this free energy machine that's being suppressed by the Moog governments, and and you know, we, it was probably bought to us by alien technology and using it uses sacred geometry and ancient aliens oh. and, and that's how the movie starts and you're just like are wow. you kidding me <laughs> like this is supposed to bring anarcho-capitalism and you're bring, talking about <laughs> free energy suppression and then it kind of goes into anarcho-capitalism and then from there like you think like okay just be done with it no they have to ruin it even further and they have like deepak chopra on oh gee. <laughs> and they're talking about like oh this will save spirituality and bring us with oneness and bring the whole world into this taurus which is sacred geometry blah 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 it's like oh my god stop <laughs> stop it now but yeah it's the worst thing ever and was it know. was it made as a troll to like it you seems know, it... like it would be <laughs> but i don't think they're Nope, 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 no. No point. But yeah, it seems like it's um, it just seems like it's just a giant troll, but it's not. Like this this guy who, uh, the guy that made it is like the, in the heir to like Johnson and Johnson or one of these huge kind of corporations or whatever, and he just dumped like millions of dollars into this movie, and it's beautiful, but it's crap, <laughs> like absolute <laughs> crap from start to beginning. It's a bunch of woo, and I'm like, wow, this is where we're going. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, just like with libertarianism, man, you got to make it more mainstream, and uh, you know, got to got to water it down just the right amount for the you know for the average for person the to understand it, Jim. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how else are you supposed to get this message to them, Jim? They they won't take it any other way. You know that. <laughs> it was not watered down at all, though. It was. It was the, I I remember watching it and I was live tweeting it. I, I, I the day it I, I, we were looking forward to it because we're like, oh my god, this is the libertarian zeitgeist, and we knew it was going to be bad. And they had like this pro. It was it cost like five bucks to watch it, but people were paying it forward, so people would pay like thirty bucks so that they can watch it and then like let four other people watch it or something. And so I, I managed to get a hold of it, and I watched it, and I was live tweeting the movie like, oh, my God, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, there's a present free free energy machines from aliens. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and it, so, was, it was a mess. Well, now, see, now, where does that rank up to, you know, alongside, well, alongside night, um, <laughs> as far as doing damage to the ideas? Well, no one saw a long side night, so we're fine. <laughs> the only reason why we're talking about a long side night is because I and some other YouTuber made a video about it. <laughs> that the, was it. That's true. <laughs> I, I, to this day, I would have probably never seen that movie if you hadn't badgered me for weeks into finally watching it. <laughs> 
<sighs> but I, I made up for it by getting you to watch the happening. So we're this even is true. Now. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> That 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 one was definitely worth it. I, I think I even I think I even paid to rent that one because it wasn't on Amazon at the time. It was on Amazon and it wasn't Man, on Prime. I, I don't know if you know. Ninety nine to rent it. But there's this thing called uh, what was it? Torrents. Called- you know, I I I, I yeah, I've heard of those things. Unfortunately, uh, I wasn't. I, I I had only you know heard about them in passing before oh, yeah. that that instance. Since then, I've I've heard and, and learned a little bit more about them. Yeah, alle- I don't allegedly. know if they're legal or not. I haven't dabbed no. into it at all myself personally. But a little birdie told me you should get something called a V VPN. Is that VP VP VPN VPN or something? You should probably that get one familiar. of those too. I guess I don't know, but that's that's what a little birdie told me, and I I think it's legitimate information. At... <clears throat> no. Well, yeah, that 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 sounds about right. I, I think that's. Uh... I I don't know what sounds right at all. I didn't hear anything, but yeah, no, like, I, I I meant the I, 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 what are you talking about? You're talking about the birdie. I was referring to what oh, the birdie yeah. said. I think that sounds right to me. Okay, so yeah, like you should you should probably check something out like that in the future next time i give you a bad movie review a good bad movie review or two yeah to review. I, I i think i think i'll take that advice next yeah, time but, so. yeah but even but even still like i said it was even worth it for me to spend that money that was uh that, that was... <laughs> it's an amazingly bad rate <laughs> yes for, i yes. still to this day do not know if he was seriously trying to make a bad movie i really don't know it, there's there's like little hints in it that maybe he knew that it was bad and was kind of playing it up like <laughs> Like you know, like you know, some some B movies you can tell like okay, uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes would be a good example. There's a lot of kind of like nods, like we know this is bad. That's the point. I don't know <laughs> if that's the point with happening, but there's well, little yeah. in there. Yeah, well, I I don't know. I I mean, I I don't I don't know his connect because I, I when I think of that, I think of stuff like you know, like the Kevin Smith movies where they make fun, you know, where the people he people make fun of themselves there. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm I'm thinking of it those terms. Fat, and, you know, the bomb and phantoms, yo. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but he wasn't he wasn't his <laughs> he wasn't as blatant as that. So I'm not sure. Word, bitch, phantoms like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, the happening. I highly recommend that one. Definitely but recommend y- it as long but, as you, you know, view it in that scope. But see, thinking back to like his other roles, like even all the way back, like what wasn't Fear one of his first roles in a movie, and he took that very, very seriously. So yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I think that just might be him. He just may be that intense when he when he's trying to act. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure. No, because. He does kind of play like the same two roles, and he kind of plays like the same kind of. Well, what are we doing, guys? We can't just do it here. But this was so overemphasized. It was like it was. It was almost like he knew how he how he acted in other movies and was parroting himself. <laughs> like, <almost. laughs> there you go. But at the same time, it's like I don't know if it's well, true, if it's supposed to be bad, well, or if it's supposed to be good. But it's great because it's so bad. I don't know. I can't tell well, anymore. God help he was me. Play- he was playing a geeky science teacher, wasn't he? Wasn't yeah. That the, wasn't that so, <laughs> but he, yeah, I don't know. But normally he plays a cop or a criminal or both. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a criminal cop. There's, yeah. I think he even said like he was hinting that he may have been in a bad movie, and then he was like, "Ah, fuck it." It was called The Happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, "I'm not gonna hide it anymore." Like, but at least I wasn't a cop. I know it was bad. <laughs> but at least it was like the first time I didn't have to play a cop or a criminal. Which is like, yeah, I guess that's true. I guess yeah. he won't even talk about fear, though. Uh, was it was it called Fear? I'm 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 pretty sure it was because there was two movies that around the same time that both had that title, and every like I remember when I used to go look for that one, the other one would come up, and I want to I want to say the other one was a Jeff Bridges movie, but I'm not sure. Um, but I, yeah, I'm positive the one with him and what was what's her name? Um, it's Alicia Silverstone. Yes, yeah, that that chick. What the hell was it? It's gonna drive me crazy unless I find out what it was. I'm almost positive it was called Fear. Uh, yeah, it was called Fear. You did it. Yeah, there you, you go. You did the thing. Congratulations. See? Yeah, it was like he was a stalker or whatever. Yeah, he was. Okay. The, he was the boyfriend that turned stalker that ended up. You know. From what I understand, like he refuses to talk about that movie, and if you bring it up, he'll get mad. It's, really? It's also the same thing if you call him Marky Mark, he'll get upset. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and how Danzig used to be like when you mentioned the, the misfits, he'd get up and leave in an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, in fairness, you know, going from go, beca becoming a movie actor after being Marky Mark, I think, is is a lot worse than. Um, <laughs> well, I was that was a better transition. I don't think yeah. the Misfits was that bad. I mean, <laughs> I think Danzig was just a little touchy. Uh, the Misfits were the, great until he left, and then they're just terrible, awful crap. I don't pretend that it doesn't exist, and I hate it because when I tell my whatever just like oh yeah just start playing some some uh misfits it'll start playing some of their newer stuff and i'm like oh, that's right okay play the collection <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't want to listen to that other crap yeah play the old stuff yeah um yeah but i but I, like i said i can under well i can understand well i mean i don't know i don't i don't, I don't remember the inner workings of what happened when glenn when glenn left the band um but i do yeah. remember um I, I i can imagine uh, anybody not wanting to be associated with being Mark would be remembered as being Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember the song that we came out of that. Oh, sadly, I do because my sister. Well, I oh. that place. I was yeah, well, good vibrations, man. Wasn't that the yeah good vibrations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the, that was the big jam, man. <laughs> and he was the coolest man. Because oh, because my. Because my sister, you know, back in the day, my sister was a huge New Kids on the Block fan. So when he came, you know, when 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 the when the kid brother of was it Donnie, right? Yeah, when the kid brother of Donnie breaks out with his little rap thing as like the anti hit as the anti New Kids on the Block, I was all for it, man. Back then, I mean, what was that? That was like late '80s. So I was, you know, 10, 12 years old. And Donnie was supposed to be the bad because they all have like this formula, like all the boy bands of those eras, even the '90s too or the 2000s. Yep. They all had the same like they had. The cute one, they had the brother of the cute one, and they had the, the bad kid, and then they had the, the young, you know, the super young one. And it was all that, it was that same formula. And I remember, like, what was, there was a show, and it was making fun of that whole boy band stuff. Uh, I think it was called In Together or something. I don't know if you ever saw that. It was on MTV. No. It was actually really good. It was, and it even had Chris Farley's brother in it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, and it was making fun of all the boy bands. And a lot of people didn't get that it was satire. <laughs> but I got that it was satire. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> you, should listen, you should check this out. They're like, no. It sounds like another boy band shit. It's like, no, no, no. It's making fun of it. And <laughs> it was the same thing. Like, there was a bad... Like, you're like, And they said, like, we need... We need uh, the cute one. We need the brother of the cute one. We need <laughs> we need the, <laughs> the bad boy, and we need the you know the little um, you know the, the the super young one or whatever the boy next door, and so they formed like this group, and yeah, I'm like, I yeah, know I my calculus. <laughs> it says you plus me equals us. It was so funny though, <laughs> and like the the brother was like a big like pretty much looked like Chris Farley. <laughs> it was a fat guy. <laughs> Oh nice. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, and yeah, I never watched I do now like after you as you're explaining it, I do remember hearing about it. I just never actually watched it, but that is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh we should probably talk about vaccines. Because I heard you talk about vaccines. Oh, let's do it now. Do it live. Oh do it live. Yeah. That 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 conversation kind of came up out of nowhere when I was on the I was on the Ancap Barber shop. We just started talking about it. Yeah, that. that's what it was. Yeah, great show. Definitely on my top five for sure. Yeah, I, I love those guys, and they're and they're a lot of fun too. I've actually I ha I've had a bunch of conversations with Scotty now because we, when we set up to do the show, him and I got you know like a few days beforehand, him and I did a, so we, make, we we so we could make sure Fiend Phone worked, and then of course the night we recorded, Fiend Phone didn't work for him, uh, so we ended up doing Discord anyway. Um, but him and I talked for like an hour and a half. It was the first time we'd ever had like any contact other than like maybe like a passing comment or two on Facebook, and uh, he's a, he's a funny dude. Uh, I, I, I mean, Adam's cool too, but I've talked to Scotty a bunch, and yeah, I, I, I'm a, I dig that show, man. Yeah, I love that show. But you were talking about vaccines, and I was like, oh, you fucker. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I, I knew this. I knew this would come up because I, I... <laughs> and I just remembered it. I was like, there was something I, I know to you talk. listen. <laughs> I was like, there's something that I need to talk about Jeremy with, and I just I can't put my finger on it. Like, were we? Even... Um. Yeah. So vaccines. And anyways. Um. <clears throat> I know there was something I should talk to Jeremy about, and I was like, that was it. And I wrote it in my notes while we were recording, and I was like, vaccines, you fucker. So what did you exactly <laughs> say about vaccines so I can grill you about it? <laughs> oh, 
I don't remember exactly what I said. <laughs> that was halfway through the show, and I was already pretty baked by that point. But uh, I know I, 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 I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I want to get that out, of, out, in, the open, yeah, I, out I, in the open to start. I will say just, I will agree with I'm that. Very skeptic, I'm very skeptical of vaccines, and I'm very – Jake, and it, it has more to do just with the – Just asking questions, bruh. Like, yeah, sorry. exactly. It has to do with more with the, you know, the 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 increase of the the scheduling, um, the ingredients, and my own personal experiences, which is which I know I was part of it. What I talked about is when we, uh, when 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 it came time for vaccines with my kids, there was a lot of like, there was a lot of pushing involved <laughs> from the doctors that I did not find appreciative. And there was also a, there was also an unwillingness to disclose certain information. It was like pulling teeth for me to get certain things from them, including the uh, list of uh, ingredients and possible side effects, which they're supposed to give you anytime they give you any type of medication. That's just kind of how the whole thing's supposed to work. <laughs> um, nope. And the, the doc, well, you know, no, I, uh, no, I mean, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, as as far as I know, anyway, and it just that just bothered me, and I also had some issues with with just needles and my my kids personally because they they wanted to do uh, uh much more call it spinal taps on both my kids wow. when they were still uh, way too way way too young. Um, um, so I'm I'm a little no. leery about doctors when it comes to certain <laughs> stuff like that. So I'm not anti-vaccination. I'm just very skeptical of the practices and and the money trail that seems to follow a lot of this stuff. And on the money trail, everything's this is capitalist society. Everything costs money. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I usually, usually when there's big funds coming into things, that's when I'm like, okay, skepticism. But it doesn't. I don't necessarily follow. Therefore, it could be bad. It's it's when it's just like a clear cut. All right, there's money being transferred from here to here, and it seems like they're getting a service from that to this. I can understand that, but I I don't see it with pharmaceuticals um in terms of vaccines directly um i mean there's a little bit because you know okay so there was a time <laughs> there was a definitely a time where we're doctors and it's still kind of true today a little bit uh they're kind of just trying to stop it a lot of it where doctors will recommend things because they're getting kickbacks and uh plane flights and vacations and stuff um, and they're cracking down on it really hard. Like they're, we're not even allowed to get pins from drug manufacturers now that say like Viagra because, oh. yeah, because, because that's, that's it, good. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, fuck now I need pins because <laughs> 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 I work in that industry and it's like, now I have to buy my own damn pins. It's annoying. Well, see, that's funny. That's funny. That's like, it was, that was actually true in the veterinary industry too, because I remember that's, that's where I used to, when I worked in the animal hospitals, that's where I used to get all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> my pens and pads yeah. and all that stuff that always had different whatever the the current new uh, animal drugs were out there. <laughs> that's that's, that's all gone now. It's all yeah. gone now. Uh, uh, damn it! See, this is what happens when uh, should have just left it alone. I guess huh? I shouldn't have complained. You no, know? nope. <laughs> shouldn't complain. And um, so yeah, there, there's a little bit of that. I'm not, I'm not going to deny that doesn't happen. But when it comes, like I can understand why a doctor would be hesitant. To be like releasing a lot of information to people who are asking too many questions and really trying to push it on you because there's like this big kind of culture right now with the anti vaxxers, not saying that you're one of them. Mm -hmm. Not saying, <laughs> but there is a big push to be like, oh God, don't be one of these people. And because of how, how that works. And you also said that like, was it the every time you hear about one of these outbreaks of whooping cough and measles are coming yes. around? It usually comes from people who were vaccinated. That's understandable. The, it's completely understandable if you know how vaccines work and why doctors are pushing on it, even if you really there's some skepticism, is because of herd immunity. And I'm going to get some people are like, oh, the herd immunity is a, it's a conspiracy, like 9-11. No, it's um, – so how, how herd immunity works is like if I if, – if we live in a culture, right, and I have this vaccine for uh, – I don't know, name something. AIDS. No, I'm the AIDS is yeah. not really <laughs> in that sense. But if let's say they have a cold vaccine, measles? let's say I have oh, a cold okay. vaccine, right? And okay. I go, okay, I'm only going to use it myself and inoculate myself. As soon as I come in contact with someone with the cold, chances are I'm going to get it. And the reason why is because I'm not just coming in contact with one person who has a cold. I like every single person that I come in contact with has the cold, and it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much variation. 
and it's going to render the the, the vaccine null. Can, null. But let's say that I get hundred. Let's say I live in a community of a hundred people, and I and I inoculate ninety nine of them, and one person's a holdout. Uh, the person who's the holdout is going to kind of have like a benefit. It's going to be an externality that he's going to benefit from that thing and not get it because everybody else is inoculated. And if some other person comes in with a cold because he's the one person in that group of 99 or 100, you know, it's 101 now, uh, he's not going to even uh, he's not going to affect uh, as many people, including the person who is not inoculated because of Damn. How, how. Yeah, how it works. It's collectivism. Damn free riders. Damn free riders. <laughs> Damn free riders. So, yeah. so, so, is that what you're saying? Anti-vaxxers are free riding on the rest on, on the on the vaccinated. Right, but how? because they're beginning so popular now, it's it's putting people at risk who even have the vaccine because it's becoming. And I'm talking well, about again, the bad anti-vaxxers I, too. Uh, no, and 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 again, I, I I like I I get I get that. Like I get how that would how that would play out. But like, like I said, when it comes to those instances, at least in the past couple of years, like at least there wasn't anybody produced that was unvaccinated that also got it. And I would I would think at least with the the hysteria that 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 follows when these stories hit by all the people that that treat anybody who is even skeptical uh, puts them all in the same camp and just goes, Oh, these anti-vaxxers, they're trying to kill all of us essentially. Mm. Um, you know, the, the reactionaries and extremists on the other side, um, they, th- I would think that if there are anybody that if these people existed, that they would be making sure they got out there and, and they were, they, they were, okay. Yeah. Look, they, they're, they, they have it too. Patient zero may have been this, this person who was vaccinated, but what about all the other people that weren't vaccinated that are supposedly making, making this person more susceptible in the first place? Yeah. Um, you know, that, again, that's where my skepticism starts and I'm still not, you know, I'm still not, I, I don't have a definitive answer on this. I'm not, that's why I don't consider myself like an anti-vaccination guy. Cause like I said, I understand how the science theoretically is supposed to work. Okay. I also, but I also understand things like the historical aspect when you look at things like polio and how, yeah, polio was eradicated, but there was some weird timeline stuff with that too, like them expanding the definition right around the time that the vaccine was was introduced, and the fact that there was two separate thing, there was two separate studies going on to figure out which vaccine was going to one. And as usually is the case, it was the person who was already in bed to a certain extent getting subsidies from the government who won out. Um, you know, so like. Plus the thing about, you know, hygiene and the, and the improvements of that <sighs> are often overlooked by a lot of people. Not, not just, I'm not saying you and I'm not saying, every, you know, the, the, again, the, the more reactionary people on the other side, they discount all of that stuff. So, again, it's like, did it help? I Yeah, it looks like it could have. Was it the wonder cure that a lot of pe- that some people want to make it be? Uh, I have a lot more. I'm a lot more hesitant to say that. Because I, um, I know in the 70s, like when I talked to a lot of people in the nursing industry who were around in the 70s, they used to tell me like, oh, back in the day, we didn't even use gloves. Like, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Oh, we didn't use gloves. We had to just wash our hands. Yeah, no, I, exactly. Yeah. Like, okay. Wow. So, and if, if yeah. you have something, like if you're in a hospital setting and you're, you're dealing with people who are constantly sick and you're not washing your hands, uh, that's a pretty good major issue <laughs> when it well, comes exactly. to transferring disease even no matter how wa- how bad you wash your hands you can contract that disease and then pass it on even not through what's on your hands because you caught it <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah sure and that but the, and now and now you have decades later now unfortunately now we're on the opposite side of that where the they got really strict with the regulations and they started making people you know Disposable you know gloves. Yeah, but I mean, well, yeah, a lot of things that are good came out of that, obviously, and like, you know, better practices and stuff. But now we're on the other end of that where everything's been so sanitized where now they have the, you know, the super bugs that can't that are not being able to be killed because everything's been, you know, everything's been over over, you know, over anesthetized. Well, (laughs) not anesthetized. um, Yeah, a lot of the super bugs are um they're 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 bacteria and it's caused yeah. by but you could also blame a lot of that stuff on people over sanitizing stuff like people who are constantly oh, yeah, using antibacterial too. soaps yep. people oh who, absolutely oh i got a cold i'm gonna take an antibiotic that is probably the bigger contributor than a lot of the stuff that happens in the hospital the, the, a lot of the stuff that happens at hospitals are to blame too but like it's funny because anytime anybody gets sick the immediate thing is to like oh take an antibiotic 
It's like <sighs> antibiotics don't do anything for the flu. Stop doing that. <laughs> like you're creating super bu- and or when people go like, "Oh, I got an antibiotic. I'm feeling better. I just didn't take the rest." No! Stop! <laughs> what are you doing? Don't do that. Worst idea ever. Sorry if I blew your ears out. But... No, no, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like that's like the worst thing ever because that well then what happens is the bug starts to die off and then and then you you stop taking it and then the bug is still there they're just like oh now we know how to defeat you now we're gonna be MRSA <laughs> thanks a lot like ah don't do that that's how you get C diff C diff <laughs> and MRSA have to be some of the worst things I ever I can't oh I hate when people get MRSA <laughs> at work it's like ah oh, why. <laughs> Why didn't you just take the whole bottle? Damn it! Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it says on there, take the fucking bottle. Well, but I can understand how like there's people who automatically lump you in with anti-vaxxers. Going back, uh, who will do that, and it's it's kind of the same thing as because um, when I was uh, th- there was one time where like I- I've never been a Holocaust denier. But there was one time where I was talking about like, oh, yeah, like I because I was talking about something with World War Two, uh, which the overall thing that I was saying was true. But there was one point that I made like, well, you know, we didn't we didn't really know about the Holocaust, uh, you know, until after it happened. And that's when they were like, um, that's a Holocaust denial thing. That's not true. And immediately people were accusing me of being a Holocaust denier. And it was like. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, I mean, it wasn't true, but, you know, like, even let's just say that it was true. It's like, okay, well, okay, you you know, that's, that's, a, that's a point, but you don't have to make that immediate jump just because I have some skepticism about one particular thing doesn't yeah. mean that I agree with all the skepticism, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, so that's, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, 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 what I, am I more hesitant to uh to to you know suggest that other people do it yeah i mean like i said i just i I encourage people to just read as much as they can on both sides of it and you know make make it as an informed decision as you possibly can i don't know i think i like i said my my thing as far as vaccines goes is, is specifically the increase of the uh you know how you know how much they're giving them and how young and an age and there's just there's a lot of stuff being pumped into kids systems if you follow that that the recommended guidelines to a T that's a whole lot of injections in a short little amount of time. Um, and no matter what, it, like that can't really <laughs> be good for anybody, <laughs> especially things like, you know, the hep B vaccine that they want to give babies. It's like, why, why, why do you need, why, why does a child need to have this? What, like, why there's cause like no stuck. <sighs> So because, because there's kids who have diabetes and they and they take medications at school and kids are crazy and like to open things up, including sharps containers. Uh, understandable, but that should be that's not one that should be like there, there's a better I, solution to that, though. It's just wait until they're older and don't take them to fucking public school. Problem solved. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's uh, yeah that yeah. that that definitely helps too um and see i mean and again i'm dealing with a lot of my own anecdotal stuff because i was i was i was skeptical beforehand and then when when i had my kids and i wasn't even an anarchist yet but i was already starting to lean more libertarian at that point uh they uh like just the way just the way everything was forced and it the way it was presented to me that like i was going to be you know, there was enough hints dropped that CPS would be coming to my door if I didn't agree to certain things. Yeah. And it was just like, all right, this is really not cool. Like, I don't like That's I don't understand. I, I have questions. I don't ha- you know, I'm not I'm not even saying no to certain things. Like the only thing I ever said no to, which I actually almost did get arrested over, was uh, when we got called in the really? middle of the night and basically told that the uh our our one daughter who was still in the NICU which meant she was still like they they were born they were born two months premature so they were in the NICU for the first year the first month of their life so she still wasn't technically supposed to be on this planet as of yet or at least in out in the world as of yet (laughs) and at a couple of weeks old they're telling us that they think she may have somehow contracted meningitis um, which the only possible way would have been through one of the workers there, um, because they were the only ones who had contact with her, other than my my ex and I, who all, 
who had the briefest amount of contact because they were in the NICU and even we weren't allowed to touch them and hold them for very why long periods stop? of time. Why did, why did you stop? I didn't hear. I don't know why you stopped. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Because you keep cutting. You keep cutting. You, you keep cutting out on my end. And it's weird. Like I see I hear clicks every once in a while and it freaks me okay. out. That's yeah, why. That, that so, sounds right. That sounds so, right. Yeah. It's so cutting I, out. Yeah. So I and so anyway, uh, so it had to be one of them. And they wanted to give my you know two week old daughter a spinal tap. And I like freaked because I was like, no, 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 no. You don't, you know, you want to shove a needle that's almost as big as her because she's, you know, three pounds at this point um, in her back because you think she may have this thing. It's like, that's insane. Um, and I was told that I was going to be arrested if I came up to protest wow. it. It's like, you know, like, okay, this is where I start to get really skeptical of the medical <laughs> system, you know. And again, it might just be because it's, it's in, in fascist New York that it's even worse. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. This is my experience with it. So right away, and even my ex at the time was like, I mean, she she was she was a little testy with me about that one. Um, but afterwards, with the vaccine, because she even she saw it like like we were basically threatened with not being able to take our kids home if we refused to sign them up for social security cards on the spot there. Um, like all sorts of junk like that, like, you know, and like the vaccines too, pushed on us by not only at the hospital, but that by the, by the doctors, um, our first set our first set of pediatricians was like very insistent and like, and didn't even want to listen to our questions about things and basically wrote us off as like anti-vaxxers. And it's like, yeah. yo, yo, we have, we have questions, the, man. Because it's not cool. Yeah. That's, well, you can under, kind of understand their concern. <laughs> like, you like, it's like these people again come on when you're dealing with it all the time i can understand where you just automatically jump because that's i'll i'll do that too like as soon as as soon as i start hearing like people who are like oh yeah 9-11 was not an inside job it was definitely this but like it does look like a controlled demolition like my first instinct is to be like you're lying you're a truther <laughs> <laughs> because I've heard that so many times from people who are like, oh, I'm, I'm just asking questions. You know, there's a lot of people who do that, and it really poisons the well for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, I, I, I don't know, man. I still and, have questions. And my, my initial reaction to listening to that was like, you fucker. <laughs> How did you slip into my show with your anti-vax nonsense? And then I was listening, and I was like, okay. Yeah. I'll just have to like fight I, with him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine, man. Like I said, I'm, you know, I, I, I try not to hold absolutist positions on anything as much as I possibly oh, can. <laughs> just so for the I'm record, not... just for the record, I'm really big on telling people, no, don't get this this flu vaccine. Don't get this year's flu flu vaccine. Uh, there's been two years in the last five where I was like, don't get the flu vaccine. Don't do it. It's 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 not worth it <laughs> because. Um, I can't remember. There was one year. Um, it was well, one a couple of I... years ago. Even a couple of years ago, didn't even the CDC come out yeah. with it after the fact? It was like it was like yeah, it's it's not we 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 basically picked wrong because with the flu, it's basically yeah. a crapshoot, isn't it? Because there's like how many different strains, and they have to like try yeah. to inoculate against what they think is going to be the most potent one that year, right? That's how that whole yeah. thing works. And there well, was yeah. two times where it was in two different places that I worked that they 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 really insisted like everybody needs to get the flu vaccine every time we give it, and there was two in both of those places that I worked, and both times that this happened they were like, hey guys we have flu vaccines we're recommending you don't get them but we're giving them to you for free. Wow. You can you can turn this one down if you want. We're okay with it because we don't think it's a good batch. Hmm. You know, well, yeah, I mean, and, and well, the fl I mean, the flu flu one specifically, I, I think, I, I mean, because again, because it's e even 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 if the science is, you know, say, say there's there uh, the, you know, what, what herd immunity, everything, say, say all that's 100 percent correct. Um with the flu vaccine, it just seems like they're taking shots in the wind every year yeah. anyway. So to me, I, I've never had one. I've also coincidentally and this is obviously complete just you know it's correlation not causation at all <laughs> yeah. i've never had the flu um never that you know no i've You've never never I've, had, I've had the flu. I, I i've gone straight to pneumonia a couple of times in my life um but i've never actually had the flu um but that's wow. again that's just that's just me and i just you know that's like i said that, that could just be a complete coincidence my dog, I think we however, need to round him up and get his blood. <laughs> my, my, my dog, however, dog the two times she's had to get the flu shot because they because here here um, some of the places that you know when when I had to board her at my vet on the rare occasions that I had to go away, 
and, and had no place to go with that. her. She both times they said I had to give her these vaccinations or she wasn't allowed to stay here. She came back with the flu after she got the shot. <laughs> And I was like, God damn it. I've never like I used to get my dog all her vaccinations. I kept her up on all everything. You know, yeah. I was a little leery about some of them because I saw because I've seen bad va- what v- bad rac- vaccine reactions do to dogs. Like I've I've witnessed this working in the animal hospital. I've worked witnessed it in my business. I had a dog that I uh, An- animal vaccines are a whole different ball game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. A whole different ball game. So but yeah. I, but but I've also seen I, I have also met a couple of children which again completely anecdotal um it just with with what really does appear to be some type of vaccine industry because in, injury because yeah, by that, all that accounts exists. beforehand by by all accounts everything was fine beforehand and then afterwards not so much um well that so exists like, like i don't think anybody denies that 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 that, that exists like people i'm sure there's some people you some can well, find some, I, someone that does i'm sure well yeah well no see that's what <laughs> see, that's what i was saying before like the people that i usually deal with unfortunately are not as rational as you they are more so the opposite end of the of this they're the, they're the, they're the horseshoe they're the, they're the end of the horseshoe yeah. for the uh, the crazy anti-vaxxers they're the reactionaries who don't think that exists or if you bring up things like okay there's a vac the vaccine injury court, but it's ridiculously hard to be like accepted into that. They give you like the most insane window of time to actually be able to file and and provide any type of evidence. Um, and there's the fact that pharmaceutical like there's a lot of cronyism that goes on, like the fact that the pharmaceutical companies can't be sued for these things in any capacity. Um, even if it can, even if you can end up proving like the batch itself had things in it that caused this, it's like that. That's where well, my skepticism rises sucks. back up again because it's it's just unfortunately I I've come across way too much stuff in in the pharmaceutical industry that does seem to be not so on the up and up, you know, uh, with you know just with the way the state happened, you know, it's this obviously it's the influence of the state and the cronyism and everything that goes on with that and the and the fascism that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally so get that. Those That's are fine. the things. Those are the things that lead me to keep coming back to. Uh, I still have more damn questions, man. <laughs> yeah, like, but at the same time, you have to look at it like, okay, but it's basically playing the odds. It's like, what are the odds of getting a vaccine injury? Relatively no, none. You know, like th- they exist, but it's real on the relative scale. It's like. One out of a couple thousand, or a couple, you know, thousand, maybe a, maybe a million, somewhere in there. Uh, when when what what's the odds of you dying from something like polio or uh, you know measles or chicken pox later in life? Uh, yeah, it's probably well. worth to get the shot. <laughs> it's time to take. It's all about a matter of risk. Like every drug has a side. Oh effect. sure. Oh There's, no, of course. Yeah, and I understand. I understand that, but you know, unfor- like you know, again with. As we were talking about earlier, the advancements in you know in 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 cleanliness and, and hygiene and uh, and uh, and and it's just and standards as far as health you know actual health care goes, um, you know like with all those things, the chances of dying from a lot of these other diseases really isn't that high either. So you know when you're talking about risk, when it comes to kids, like I said, like I said, man, I don't know. When I became a parent, things shifted for me a little bit, where I was kind of like, ah, all right, I can understand some of these things, but a lot of these other ones, why? It doesn't make sense, especially at this young of an age. Like I don't get it. It just it it I seems don't know, like. But the, when you see some of the when you see the pictures of of kids who get polio, it's almost like an Agent Orange disaster. That's pretty. It's pretty ugly stuff. Uh, Nope. Yeah, it is. Nope. Didn't. Oh, sorry. I, I don't know why I stopped talking. Go ahead. Sorry. I don't know. No, I was saying. Yeah, they are. They they they, they are disturbing. So, yeah. I, I like I said, man. I'm 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 not I'm not anti the idea. I'm just skeptical of the delivery mechanism currently. That's that's more my biggest. That's 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 my bigger concern, and all, all the things that just don't seem to add up. You know, uh, again with like I said with with all the inner workings that I that I've researched and stuff like that it's just like oh man come on there's there's a lot of questions here i can't i can't just say definitively they're going to be they're 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 good and you should just get them and and forget about it i don't know yeah. i still I, I i i would i would rather question more but again that's just me and i'm not i'm not gonna other other than the crazy people on, on either side i'm not gonna argue with anybody about their decision as long as you don't think as long as you don't think they should be mandatory i really don't care no i don't 
But I, why, I do say know, vaccinate your fucking kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my kids have been, you know, and again, like I said, though, even for even with my own personal experiences, like realizing that, like, you know, they all wear off pretty darn quickly and there's nothing left in your system after a while anyway. Um, I don't know. All these things that could supposedly affect you later in life, too. Um, yeah, we need boosters. Yeah, they they stop and they're like, you know, they give you the boosters. What is it like the first seven years you end up getting like uh, intermittently booster shots or is it up to 10? Like, I don't remember. I don't remember. Something like something like that. I, I don't, at least that's the way here's it used the thing. to be. I don't have kids, so I don't give a shit <laughs> what the schedule is. <laughs> Just so long as it's as yeah. long as you're not well, harming again. my nephews, then I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, you know, then I'm going to take issue. Like when, when my kid, when my nephew, not my kid, when my nephew gets whooping cough, someone's going to get some cult skulls cracked. All right, <laughs> which one of your friends is one of these anti-vaxxer nut jobs? <laughs> it's your fault. No. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, my my kids pretty much were given most of the stuff, most of the vax against actually both of our both mine and my ex's will at one point. Um, so they have them anyway. <laughs> okay. Although that was again a personal experience, but that was another thing that that really bugged me. That that uh, even my ex was like, who again was very on the fence about a whole bunch of things. Um, and then when she was came face to face with a doctor who basically said, after my one daughter, the one who uh, ha- has some issues to begin with anyway, um, and was also the one that they thought had meningitis, and they gave her a spinal tap against our will at like at two weeks old. <laughs> um, they. Uh, she had been given this a set of vaccinations and then they went to go check. What is it? The titer? Is that how they check? Is that what it is to check it? I always forget the, to, they, they check. They, however, they check to make sure that it actually took somehow um, and nothing came up and they did it a second time and nothing came up again. And the doctor's response when my, my ex was like, well, how do we go about this? They're obviously not like they, you've given her these vaccinations multiple times. Now, this very young child who was already two, here two months early, it was like you know, three pounds when she came out. Um, how many times do we keep doing this? The doctor's response: Well, ah, we just keep sticking her with. We just keep sticking her with them until <laughs> one of them takes. And it was like, whoa! All right, dude. Now I have a real issue with this. <laughs> like, I don't see how that's medic. Like, that doesn't. That seems really wrong to me. I don't know, man. Again, it's it, it's Probably an emotional no response. It's a it's emotional response. It has to do with my kid. You know, it's my kid. Um, you know that we're talking about here. I get that, but. I was just like, okay, now I have pause again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because this is what I'm dealing with. You know, I can see how you could have that perspective. <laughs> I so, can. That, that doesn't actually sound like something wrong with the vaccines. That sounds like something with a doctor. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, like when I was younger, I had actually been diagnosed with a, it's a very rare, but non-lethal or, um, What's the term? Like, it, it's not going to affect me too much. Uh, form of um, muscular dystrophy um, when I was younger, and how they told how they determined that was they were sticking, they were like a good maybe seven eight inch needles, and they were huge. They looked like knitting needles into my legs. And what happened was I was playing. I used to play basketball when I was a kid in Pee Wee or whatever it's called, a little league whatever. And I used to play basketball, and like after a while, like I used to complain, like, "Oh, my legs hurt." And uh, we went to the doctor, and they were like, "Oh, that sounds weird. It sounds like like the early forms of muscular dystrophy. Let's do some tests." They jammed like these huge like knitting needles into my legs. It was painful as hell. And they were like, "Okay, now move your leg up." And and of course, every time I moved my leg with those needles in, you feel the muscles pulling on. The- <laughs> it was yeah. the worst thing ever. And they were like, "Yep, he has it, but it's not really going to affect him." Uh, it's like a really rare form and it's, you know, it'll pro- he'll probably grow out of it, but we want to do more tests. It's like, well, if it's not a problem, why do you want to stick needles back in his legs? You saw how excruciating it was. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yourself. Like, no. Yeah. So some, some doctors are assholes. They just love doing uh, yeah. that shit. Well, and again, it was it was once, you know, once we moved a couple of pediatricians and found one who was at least willing to listen to our, our concerns and questions and alleviate some of them. And then agree with us on, on other ones. Um, almost like, you know, kind of like, you know, he wanted to be off the record about it, but it kind of was like, yeah, you know, which again, led me back to my, my conspiracy mind going like, well, obviously if he's, if he wants to talk off the record about this, maybe he is being pressured from people. Maybe he's trying to turn my frogs gay. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Um, but you know, but again, once, once we found that, then we've been with the same pediatrician for years. 
yeah. you know, because it was because because again, I I recognize that initial one as more like you said, more of a doctor problem than necessarily a vaccine problem. But I also asked around, and and a couple of more of the old school medical crowd that I came across was kind of the same thing. Oh yeah, we just keep stuck at them until it works. It's like, okay, I don't want my daughter to keep getting stuck repeatedly. <laughs> if it's not working, it's not taking for some other reason, obviously, you know, you've already done it twice. Um, uh, maybe there's something wrong with her chemistry where it's not, you know, that that's the other thing. They're, these are one size fits all solutions that are not going to fit everybody, yep. you know? So that's where I come down on it, man. Okay, that that's a fair position. I still disagree with it to uh, an extent, but it's I don't think it's completely. It's it's you're definitely not Jenny McCarthy, that's for sure. But that was my initial no, reaction no. when you first started talking about it because it, it's just no, no, no. I'm, I'm not on the so... autism. I'm not. I'm not on the aut- You know, I'm not on the vaccines yeah. cause autism yeah. bandwagon. <laughs> um, Dave. You know, I uh, well originally believe me. Originally, I started down that path. Um, but my ex actually, that's what, that's what she's done for a good, you know, good portion of her adult life. She's worked with children with, you know, children, on the autism spectrum. And, uh, she, when, when her and I first met, even before we started dating, she, we had conversations about that. And that's where I, I learned that she was a little skeptical of the whole thing. And it wasn't that she believed, like, it would, you know, talked about between her and her colleagues that they didn't think it was that vaccines caused it. But there was there's a there was a theory already, you know, growing in that community already that there's certain people are predisposed to it and force for these people. Unfortunately, some of these vaccines may trigger it, um, which, you know, is is an unfortunate side effect of them. But it leads people who are heavily conspiracy minded to automatically make that jump to what it causes it. Yeah. No, 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 no. They, I, th- those are the people that don't understand the difference between correlation and causation. Yeah. I like to believe I understand that difference and try to, when I talk about these things, I do try to be clear about that, that I'm yeah. not saying I have definitive proof of anything. I have a lot of questions. I've done, a, I've done a decent, you know, I've done a, you know, I spent a couple of years researching this stuff. So, you know, and I went from the crazy extreme on one side to the other, and I found some people, like I said, on both sides who I think are a lot more rational in their in their arguments for them. And I, you know, studied stuff from them and did more research. And, you know, I still have questions. That's just my thing. But again, I understand the in theory how the science should work. I do get that. Okay. that I, 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 res- I respect that aspect of it. <laughs> That's cool. We'll, we'll so. agree to disagree. Yeah, they, they, they turn frogs gay. Yeah. <laughs> only some of them. Only, only, only the frogs that are predisposed to it. Yeah, and and I have been, <laughs> I, and I have been learning my my Alex Jones through imitate. I, I I get a lot of my imitations through that mechanism. Like when I hear other people imitate, that's I'm like, oh, okay, I'm starting to pick up on. Yeah, he, they do kind of do that sort of thing. Okay, yeah. So I do kind of get a lot of my Alex Jones. At least my 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 calm Alex Jones. I get him from that. That was a bad example. <laughs> Uh, because that's what you guys were talking about. So anyways, um, oh, yes. we, should we get into Trump? Because we've been on for over an hour already. Should we talk about Trump and the Saudi? We could try to touch on it quickly. I, it's yeah. mostly I just want to laugh. I just want to laugh at the <laughs> alt-right. Because they were like, he's going to stick it to Saudi Arabia. And he's going to stick it to Israel. No. <laughs> and he, in, in a matter of the same week, <laughs> he, he was dancing, doing the, the, the Saudi sword dance, and then immediately started praying against the, uh, the wall. And he's the only president to ever pray against that, that wall. Ha ha. Wait a minute. He is? I'm yeah. so confused. Trump, yeah, like the alt right was saying, like, oh, he's he's going to take a more nuanced position with Israel, and oh, he's going to take a, you know, he's going to stick it to the Saudis. No, I know that, but, but he did I, the sword he, dance. You didn't see the sword dance? <laughs> no, I saw that. No, but the wall thing. I, no, the wall thing. I, maybe I misheard you. I thought you said he was the only one. I thought all the, I thought they all prayed against the wall. I thought that was part of the thing. There's there's a, there's like pictures of all like the, at least the past six presidents I've seen just really? recently because this whole thing happened. Because where I, the, there was a meme made, there was a meme made out of. Obama, Bush, Clinton, and Trump all with their hand on the wall. <laughs> um, the, and, 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 you know, making fun of Trump for it. Maybe, 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 I mean, obviously I'm getting my information from memes. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not accurate, but I don't know. Um, but, yeah, no, I know, I know that he, I know that he did all those things. Oh, I'm no, sure it's killing did. the alt-right. There, yeah, that's, there's Obama doing it. 
Yeah, I thought that was the whole thing. I, I thought that's what, what like, I know they thought they were, he was going to stick it to him. I thought they, they thought he was going to be the first one to reject it. Yeah. And he, nope, he's, he's out there doing yeah, it. Nope, sure, right away. <laughs> Let's try for Clinton, because I saw Bush and Obama. Let's try Clinton. I haven't seen Bill. I did see a picture of Hillary doing it, but I didn't see Bill yeah, yeah, yet. Yeah, Hillary. No, nope, there's Bill. Oh, there you go. See? Okay. How about, Ro- how about Reagan? How about Reagan? You want to find one of Reagan? <laughs> <laughs> We're going for Reagan. Let's see how far we can go back. <laughs> Talk about a god that failed. Am I right? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> oh there, there goes our conservative audience. I don't, I don't see Reagan. Oh, okay. Don't see Reagan. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe it just became popular. I see Chris Christie though. <laughs> or po- po- post post the nineties. <laughs> there you go. That's the even wall better. praise to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I can make That's fat a huge jokes. bitch. I uh, I I can make fat jokes. I am fat. But yeah, like he was supposed to be the one that was going to be different from everybody else. And so far, he hasn't done anything different than anybody else. I tried to warn all these bastards. I was so screaming. Did I. These, I was trying. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, I, I, I we too thought that he had no. Ch- I mean, I, I convinced myself that he finally had a chance of winning before the election. I think you didn't. You, you, no, you, I was you were not wrong up until the last minute, right? Well, yeah. Not um, buying it, not for one minute. I finally caved about a month before the election. I was like, holy crap, this guy really does have a chance of winning. Um, but overall, yeah, no, I was trying to warn everybody, all the people that eventually, all the libertarians that eventually went full alt, alt, you know, yeah. alt right. Uh, but you I know what? Actually, kept saying, I think not going to be different. I think towards the end, I was kind of going like, there's a chance he could win. But, but he, like, it was, I remember I made a Stefan Molyneux video where I was like, there's no, no, no way he's going to win. Forget it. It's going to be Hillary. Just deal with it. And then, like, the next day, the Comey thing came out, and I was like, "Yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops. No, but yeah, but I. But either way, like, you know, I, you, and I, you and I were both saying it, and, you know, I got chastised constantly. Oh, you think they're both, both the same? It's like, no, no, just the parties and what they're going to do. Yeah. It's, the, the power structure is the same. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who gets in. That's that's what I've been trying to say for the longest time. I thought all these people understood that already. It's, yeah, Obama. The, the was problem is not. To... Yeah, the problem is not the Republicans. The problem is not the Democrats. The problem is the fucking state. Yeah, like <laughs> we're, we're like I remember they were always saying the the whole time like Obama is kind of an outsider. Like he's not really from Washington. He make, he's only been senator for like two years, and look what he did. And and he was only like like a mayor or something. Was he a mayor or something like that? I think he no. Was... He he started off as a state senator. Yes. Uh, the state from Illinois. Center, there we go. I knew it was something. for only like for only like two, only a couple of years, I think. And then he jumped right to the uh, Senate. to the f- to the federal Senate position, and then for for and, a term. Yeah, I don't even think he finished out his not term. even. Oh, that's right. <laughs> six, ter- six terms for the Senate, right? Yeah, he only did two, right? I think he only did like two years, well, and then he was. But not even a year and yeah. a half, maybe officially before he had to leave. Yeah, yeah. So exactly, he just jumped in. Yeah, it's the same. I kept same crap. Exactly. Same, same crap. crap. Same crap. And he was, That's he, why was I, he was going to end all the wars and all this other stuff. He didn't spend a single day in office when there wasn't a war. Not one day. One of, not one, one day. Of, <laughs> of course. <laughs> what do you think is going to be different with Trump? Like, really? <laughs> yeah, how those how those first hundred days working out for you, folks? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so many, so many of those people. As that first hundred days started to started to creep up closer, all of a sudden, predictably, switch positions to it's only been a hundred days after it. You know, for the whole time is you're not you can't you can't wait to see what's going to happen during these first one hundred days. And then, of course, as, as always, that's why to this day one of my one of my favorite memes I ever made was when I can when I compared uh, voters in in a meme to ferrets, and it was in regards to Trump about oh n- new shiny object, forget everything, yep. you know, here we go. <laughs> Yep, it's, it's... I think maybe, and I, I'm even question. I, I even question this. This maybe Ron Paul would have pulled out. Maybe Ron Paul would have closed all the bases overseas. Maybe Ron Paul wouldn't have been interventionist. Maybe, and I don't even. I can't even say that with full confidence. I can't. I don't think he had. I don't think he would have had the choice. Yeah, that that was my point with Trump. Because even if he does believe half the bullshit that he's been spraying out there for the past, you know, how year plus at this point now, uh, or even longer, I guess, you know, even if even if he believes even half of that, 
it doesn't matter because it's not it doesn't like that that was my point it doesn't matter who gets in you know the whole when they talk about you know because even ron paul mentioned it you know when people talk about the deep state you know the idea that the that the yeah i always fuck up that word bureaucracy, <laughs> bureaucracy. That, that is there for 20 30 40 50 years that doesn't give a flying fuck what who who the you know the the figurehead is what we you know what letter they have next to their name they don't give a shit because nope. they know they're going to outlast them no matter what so they're the ones who keep the policy going. I mean, the majority of things that people end up getting arrested or harassed or fined for um, aren't even laws. It's just regulations created by all these agencies anyway. Yeah, so they don't care. Right? So Ron Paul would have been, I, I, I believe he would have been, he would have been neutered just like the rest of them. Yep. You know, he may have tried to speak out more, but then he may have gotten, you know, treatment that, you know, if you're more conspiracy minded, some of the other presidents have gotten in the past. Yeah, but but, but the same. Like, here's why. I, like, I question it just maybe just a little bit. Like, there's still a part of me that like would believe that he would have gotten office. He would have elected a bunch of establishment hacks, just like Trump did, and you know, been good on some things and bad on some things. And you you would have been like, why isn't he completely filling his campaign promises? Because he's president. That's what presidents do. They don't fulfill their campaign promises. But at the same time, like, I know that he's he's been pretty in practice. Like, you can actually see his record. He's been pretty anti-establishment. Oh, There's yeah. a little dibs and dabs here, but that's about it, you know. Well, no, he he played it as as far as I can tell, you know, he played it as as close to the libertarian line as he as, as anybody has ever done, I guess. Uh, you know, the entire time he was there, you know, both times, I guess, uh, even more so, I, I guess, the second go around. Um, cause right, he took like a, I think he took like six or eight yeah. years off in between time, something like that, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I could, he definitely did. He, he definitely, although, you know, I guess it could be argued that it didn't really matter because it wasn't like he had a chance of getting any yeah. of his things passed anyway. So he, he didn't, he, he, he could have just, he could have just been the protest vote because he knew it didn't matter yeah. type of thing, you know, but I, I don't believe that. I mean, he seems earnest. Yeah. And there's um, a lot of things it, that he voted against, like, even though, you know, he probably could have swayed it. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of stuff in there like that. But when, he's, when I'm talking about like he's dibbed and kind of establishment type things, I'm talking about like there was some kind of like fishing boat thing in his town or something like that that he voted for some kind of pork barrel project just because they were in his town. And his excuse was, well, you know, it's a free market, but, you know, it's for, for my city or whatever. I'm just taking back tax money. And well, the free market will fix it. Um, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But, no, no. I, yeah, like I said, he's he was he's pretty solid in that regard. But yeah, I uh, I don't think it, I don't think it would have mattered. That's the thing. I think he would have wanted to do all those yeah. things, but I think he would have been quietly taken into a taken into his office with a bunch of people and just been like, okay, that listen, Here's everything you're saying, K Ron, it's great. <laughs> well, well, you know, you can take it that far, but basically. I, I, I was thinking I was thinking more along the lines that they would just <laughs> they would just bury him in bullshit with like yeah. every justification and rationalization from every possible department. So it would literally take him too long to sift through all of it to actually do anything on any time type of time schedule yeah. that would make but people the, believe he was actually doing it. But at the same time, like he is connected with people who understand like how these things works and in every department that he could actually make cabinet picks. Unlike Trump, who was just like, I don't know, Gorsuch, sure. Or, no, well, Gorsuch actually was a good choice. But that was recommended to him. And that was a Supreme Court, not a cabinet pick. My bad. Uh, but, like, you know, like, oh, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Ah, oh, fuck. Who's the guy who's going to probably just going to, who's going to be uh, testifying? Who just refused. Oh, uh, Flynn? Flynn, yeah. They're like, oh, Flynn? Everybody says good things about Flynn? Okay, Flynn. Okay, uh, Jeff Sessions, sure, why not? Whatever. I just I don't know what I'm doing here. I wasn't supposed to win. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't research. I didn't do my due diligence and research these people that I should choose on my uh, cabinet right away. Like a lot of people do. But I mean, like I know I know he's connected with people. Like he he probably would have been like, oh, I know someone who knows the law, who should be the attorney general. Like maybe who has someone as a background in law who is on board with me. Uh, Jeff Napolitano. There we go. Like he he, yeah, he well, knows yeah, those but... people. You know. Oh, he again and, and again he he knows them, but 
would he actually be able to get them in there? Because don't all the cat don't most yeah. of those positions have to go through some the Senate? Of them, some of them do, not all of them. A lot, not all yeah. of them, but a lot of uh, uh, well, at least at least the so called quote unquote important ones are supposed to have like to go the through. Department of Education is important. Well, well, exactly. Like, <laughs> like that's why I said so called. Yeah. <laughs> um, Allegedly. Well, Believe me, I've I've been against, I've been against the Department of Education long before I became a before I became an anarchist or libertarian yeah. or anything. <laughs> so I, I know if it's because that's because I grew up with two educators and well, you know I public school quote unquote educators in my house. So yeah. I I understand how fucked up it is. Um, but yeah, like I said, I I think he would have tried to nominate people like that. Sure, I could see him vote. Yeah, try, you know, yeah. you know, Napolitano, Tom Woods for some position. You know, like one of one of the economists. You know, pick any pick, pick any economist. Bob Murphy, anybody from uh, yeah. you know from Mises. Um, I could see him totally wanting to get those people in there. Would they actually get past the ones that needed to get past? Doubtful, because yeah. again, the the establishment on both sides has been working together for so long because most of them have been there for at least a decade or two or longer. <laughs> it would be kind of great to have Bob Murphy at the, at the helm of the federal reserve. <laughs> that would be spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> He'd just be like, no, just stop everything. Just shut it down. Just stop. <laughs> and of course they wouldn't. And then they'd be like, Oh, look, objectivism. <laughs> the federal reserve didn't work after all. All right. <laughs> well yeah so all right i think so, we should probably wrap this up because we've been in almost an hour and a half now do you want to plug your website your web your web i can't plug. i can't plug my website because our website's down at the moment oh <laughs> i think dave i think on top of everything else dave forgot to pay the bill and uh <laughs> it's actually been <laughs> sometimes there, are, being late uh, on new... payments is not always a bad thing exactly in this case exactly um, yeah the site actually uh, supposedly is actually finally getting worked on he finally uh got well because he finally took the advice of so many people and just decided to do a wordpress site and we have plenty of people who know how to make wordpress sites pretty easily it's super uh, easy you just exactly. click one click install you add a theme you add some pretty pictures and done i know I know. So there, that that's supposedly getting done, and I think I'm fine. I think because of this, we're I'm finally going to get him to switch uh, over to Agorist Hosting um, to hold all of our to hold all of our stuff since we're going to have to change things over anyway. Yeah, um, I, I would I would probably switch over to Agorist Hosting if people donated in Bitcoin, but people don't want to pay in Bitcoin because the transaction fees are like eighty bucks to transfer two dollars. It's ridiculous right now. That's yeah, I keep, I, I keep, I keep, I keep, I keep saying people posting about that. I haven't had to transfer anything in a while. I, I've been everybody's holding on, clinching, <laughs> clinching every Bitcoin. Uh, they have. Yeah. I, well, no, I actually almost, I almost actually started dipping into other cryptocurrencies the other night. I was, I, I was getting, I was getting on a couple of different exchanges, and I was getting all, I was getting all hyped up to uh, possibly sell some of my, sell some of my Bitcoin and start uh, diversifying. But I ended up. What oh, I just didn't pull, I didn't pull the trigger, and now I'm pissed because the Ethereum jumped up even further. And I was like, God damn it! I knew I should have bought it 120. Yeah. What is Monero at? I that's, don't that's know. I, I, that's that's my that's my favorite coin right now, even more than Bitcoin. Oh, we're at 41. God damn. Nice. Oh no. Um, down. Damn it. Oh. See, I, I was I don't know. I was I was try, I was starting to get on on the Ethereum train with with everybody, and then. Uh, and then apparently, well, Dave, my you know my 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 my, my buddy Dave, uh, <laughs> painter, he uh, he was talking about this Nexus coin uh, that I hadn't heard of, uh, but he was going on and on about it, and he posted about it, and somebody else jumped on that thread and posted a bunch of information about Nexus coin. So I went there and looked at it. I was like, oh, it's still at a you know it's still pretty low, but it's it seems to be climbing like everything else, and uh, you know I could totally throw like twenty to fifty bucks at this right now and be okay with that. You know, get a you know get a bunch of coins, yeah. and uh, if it continues to rise, great. Of course, I found out later that Dave, you know, as usual, didn't really know what he was talking about and had, was had another coin that was next something. Um, but apparently, that, I, I got to look into that one too. And now I forget, he didn't actually give me the name of that one. But that one's supposedly trying to do the distributed DNS thing that uh, Bitcoin well, Monero, eventually Monero, gave up on. Yeah, Monero is, is or have been doing have been uh, implementing it for over a year, like long before. Are they? Now? They I, Fluffy Pony had messaged me and uh, Michael uh, a while, a couple months ago, saying like. Uh, because I think I think I had mentioned that I was I think I I think I was the one that said it. I said 
that like, oh, it looks like maybe Monero is getting some some advice or something. And they were like, no, actually, we've been, we've been, all of our ideas have been doing this for like over a year. Oh wow! It was just like independently thought of. Like I guess they were already trying to work with with Nate, with one of the guys from Namecoin, but it seems as though they kind of understood the history of Namecoin, <laughs> and so they're kind of just <clears throat> sort of taking a lot of his advice, but throwing a lot of his other advice out because a lot of Namecoin crap was just garbage. But yeah, yeah. Well, so, any hoodle. So I, I still have I'm, to diversify. But yeah, I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm not trying to invest in it. I'm. I. I want. Monero to do as a currency, not as a speculative investment. I that's I think that's what's killing Bitcoin, and it's going to be like that's what's going to keep uh, Bitcoin from being adopted worldwide is because the price keeps going up and down and up and down. It needs to be steady, and Monero seems to be pretty steady, and there's not a lot of speculative market in it compared relative compared to other, other things. I mean, there's still some, but it's pretty stable overall. You know, there's just like a steady incline. Maybe it drops down a little bit. You know, it, the bubble is only taking it up, what, 20 bucks? Not not even that. $10. Yeah. Well, if it's only if it's only at 40 bucks, that's still a pretty big increase, isn't it? It was, it was about 25 bucks. before it started. Yeah, so. That's what I'm saying. It's, the, it's, it's still a decent I mean, that's still Relative a decent Relative to Bitcoin, Bitcoin's up like. <laughs> oh, well, bit, yeah, yeah. Bit, Bitcoin is. is... <laughs> Is coming is coming close to doubling in in, yeah. in a week in a week or two at this point, um, which you know I obviously don't I don't I don't think it's going to last either. But no, I just my my, my unfortunately with everything else going on in my life right now, um, I need to I need to hold on to whatever I have for the most part, and I'm very my 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 biggest fear is actually trying to get on some exchange and just trying to sell a little bit of my Bitcoin and end up losing it before I can actually transfer yeah. it to other things. Yeah. And I'm like, that's the last, that's the last thing I need. It's like, cause if it is high and I can manage to sell off some of it, I may need that very, very soon, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm told. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to sell some of it anyway, cause some of it did come my way. Some recently, allegedly, allegedly. um, for, for something going on in my life, I don't remember what it was, but yeah, something. Yeah, there was some, something. There was. I kept hearing something about that. I just don't know exactly what it was. Yeah, something yeah. happened. I, yeah, my God, memory's shot the these days. What fuck that, was it, man? I couldn't. I don't. Yeah, I, I just don't, don't remember. Know. Yeah, I just. Yeah, it's no clue what. what. No, it's 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 been what yeah it's been. It was it was it was a month a month or two ago. What what was what? I don't know. Oh. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a month or two ago, or I, just, I think either. something like that. So like, God, I, I barely remember yesterday most of the time, man. Yeah. Trying to keep up with everything I do. It's been pretty weird. So, I yeah. So about. is life though, man. You know? Anyways. So yeah. since you don't have anything else to plug. <laughs> no, well, like I said, well, well our stuff, our, 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 our podcast, yeah, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. The, the podcast can still be found at libsynth, uh, libsyn.com slash Seeds of Liberty. I, I think that's what it's under. Uh, but we can still be found there. We're, we're still, you know, all our stuff's still out there. And uh, I'm, and I'm still on the fiends twice a week now. So yep. you, know, you can find me there too. Yeah. Hmm. It's almost like there was something we're forgetting yeah yeah anyways well great talking to you again <laughs> yeah man it's been yeah. good worms Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the BitCot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. Them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Uh, compare competitive competitive app. God damn it!
<laughs> I never fuck these up, man. I never do a second take, let alone third. Jesus Christ. <sighs> third time to jump. Yeah. The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Room for Freedom. Damn it. <laughs>